Julia. Julia hey. Amberson. Hi, now I see you. Hi. You're looking great, Samantha. Thanks. <laughs> I feel pretty good. Yeah, you look good. I'm watching these uh, little blank spaces. Yes, you gotta, you're going to have to sit next to you. That's all right. I just want to, I don't have to, do I? That's really, really interesting how this works. And it amazes me that so many of you are in such different parts of the country and here we are hi canon hi samantha <laughs> this is wonderful yeah back east they're back east yep New Isn't York that amazing? hawaii back east california we're all coming together you know when they I say from sweden sweet i am sweet <laughs> i miss sweden <laughs> <laughs> I love doing the classes there. That was a blast. All right. And I love your background. Pardon? I said, Helen, Helen, I love your background. Oh, it's just one of the regular virtual backgrounds. If you go yeah. under, uh, you, yeah, so. Anyway. But it's very cool. But Samantha, Samantha, I did my first uh, webinar seminar over the last two days. So I now kind of know a bit about Zoom and hosting if you need help. Oh, cool. Uh, Thanks. I've become, I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but I've learned a little bit. <laughs> That's just something that I'm trying to, okay. you know, I'm, I, my learning curve on this was called jump in and do it. <laughs> That's what we did. Same <laughs> and same. then I had to send a lot of different messages to people in order to know, uh -huh. oh my gosh, they've got to have this. Yeah, in her. Oh, gosh. <laughs> my friend, the animal psychic on TV to do a class. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> it's like uh, we're getting close to the time to start. Yeah. Working. yeah. So, just one second to let everybody in. Okay. Um, it's all right with me. I'm totally enjoying this. So maybe maybe a little bit of housekeeping. If you want to send Samantha Curry a question about your animal, send it to Samantha Curry host, not Samantha Curry. That way it will go to Ashley, who knows how to check the chat box. And while Samantha's talking, Ashley will probably mute everybody else just for the sound quality. And then you can, when Samantha opens it up for questions, you can unmute yourself or Ashley will mute and unmute for you. So this is my first time like talking to an animal communicator. Like, are we supposed to, if we, do I ask questions about what to do about uh, my- At the end of my talk, um, I, I'm gonna open up to a question mm. and ask. Answers. Wait, wait, before you start, I know somebody trying to get in. Yeah. I know, I can feel that there are several places I, that have names and I, You know, if you drop by and um, yeah. it's, uh, a second, I was just looking at something that came up on the screen. And um, I'm with um, Samantha and her friends. It's fine. Just go ahead and give me a... Here, I think I'm not sure what this is calls. on the screen. Go ahead and, uh, uh, say hi. Stick your head in and say hi. Okay. All right, guys. I'm just trying to make sure everybody okay, gets bye. in. I actually, Samantha, I just was simultaneously upgrading your account because I realized you weren't in the upgraded version. So I just paid for you to upgrade your account. <laughs> That's why I got a little distracted. I want to make sure that everybody can get into the meeting. Um, and if you have sent a question to Samantha, I'm the one who's getting them. This is Ashley. I'm trying to help her today. So you'll see, I, it says my name is Samantha, obviously. That's not me. <laughs> But I am going to be fielding your text as you go. Um, I'm, I, I use Zoom a lot for work. I'm not an expert, but um, we're going to give it our best shot. And Vicki also is, 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 is helping a bit. So I appreciate everybody's kind of understanding as we get this going. We do have about um, 55 people in the meeting right now, Samantha. Okay. So um, you'll notice there's an arrow. If you want to scroll over at any point on the gallery, you can see everybody else who's. who's uh, right there. You want me to do what? <laughs> you <just have> to. <laughs> Can't do this. Huh? Oh, I see. All right, now I'm up for the speaker view. Click that, right? Okay. So that changed it to just hi. <laughs> Single person. <laughs> now gallery view. Yeah, I'm supposed to get everybody in. I can see the little side thing where it's like push that. Okay. And I see a lot of names, but not faces. 
Mm. <laughs> their video turned off, Samantha, so you'll just see their their name. So okay. they know, yeah. What I'm going to do is um, go back to gallery right here, back to where I was. Okay. Wow. See if, can, see if I can do this, and then I'm going to start. Uh, I'm not sure what just happened. I have uh, just a few people at the top, and I think you went on to uh, uh, gallery uh, speaker view, Samantha. It should say speaker view when you're on gallery view. Yeah, it's on. Uh, if you click speaker view, it should turn into gallery view for you. I have it on gallery view, and then I just. But it's on speaker view now and <laughs> so it's, Samantha I this is right. Ken, Samantha I have a question and this is also of you Ashley and of you Vicki mm -hmm. are you recording this I hope we are recording it um and uh in just a minute everybody in the in the gallery is going to go to mute except for Samantha um and then we'll keep it that way probably throughout most of it and we'll open it up again at the end for 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 questions, but because there's so many people um, joining, might be easiest for you to send your questions to me. Um, you can click on me and send privately, uh, or you can put them in the group chat, and then I will read them to Samantha at the end. And if it works, we can also try to have people um, say they would like to ask, and I can unmute you and you can ask directly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's going to go silent for me, which is. I think pretty good because the visuals and I'm you may find me closing my eyes a lot because everybody is so completely relaxed there's a lot of visual communication going on and uh, one of the biggest reasons I don't go on Facebook is it feels like I'm being slightly electrocuted when there's too much visual information so don't take it personally if I close my eyes <laughs> I, I'm absolutely delighted that you're here. And I want to thank every single one of you for showing up. And the reason that I'm, I'm thrilled and terrified at the computer aspect of it, but thrilled that you're here, is because you're going to take this information to your friends and family. And it's going to expand my work so other people understand how to communicate with their animal companions. This is extremely important to me. I've been working with animals for the last 45 years. I think as a child, I was always tuned into the animals, but I didn't know I was actually communicating with them. So I found those key aspects within our, every single one of you has the same aspects. So what I'm gonna do first is go back in time and talk about our similarities in communication with other species. And those similarities are so profound to me that I really want you to grasp it. And I'm gonna utilize the animals regarding our puppies because we're tuned into the more of the domesticated animals. We're gonna start more with that. So I'm gonna talk in terms of a puppy and a human being. When we come in, we start utilizing our five sense senses, which are sight, smell, taste, hearing, and then touch. And so we're doing, the puppies are feeling, doing the same thing. They're using sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing to understand their world that they're crawling in and moving in and we're crawling in. And so we see an object and we wanna taste that object, feel that object. The unique thing between the puppy and the human is the mother dog is giving a vision and a sensory information to her offspring as she watches them. Our mothers are doing the same thing they're giving us the word and at the same time they see the vision of that object in order for us to understand our world. 
So we're both utilizing the same tools, same exact same thing, and we're doing the exact same thing. And then as we move and grow and start to learn, we add that sensory aspect, which means our sensory organs that gives information past the body as well as internal. You have a whole stream of your sensory system that moves up and down the spine, into the brain, to every organ, then a subtle thing that happens. And that subtle thing is the information goes to the skin and then past the skin. Now the animals start to accelerate in the learning on that one because they need to know what is around them in order to feel safe and not be dinner. For us, we only use it when we feel like somebody's staring at us and we'll turn around and look and see who's staring at us. Or we may get a creepy feeling that this isn't safe in this area. It's the same tools and aspects in our nature that's giving us that subtle information. We do not accelerate or study that or enhance it or to expand it as part of our communication ability. So now we're using the sensory systems. Now, what I find is uh, really interesting, at about three years of age, we start really fantasizing, daydreaming, pretending, creating a new world for ourselves that feels real, not knowing that those skills are the same tools you need for communicating with other species. By the time you start school, those tools are considered to be less important. And in many times you'll hear uh, the teacher saying, you're not paying attention. You're, you're daydreaming or your parents. You have to study this now not daydream. And so we give this ability uh, minimal um, focus. We don't see the value in it. Uh, the only areas that I see that the value of the daydreaming, fantasizing, pretending to be really important is in our sports, to see the end product, not in every day. So if by the time we're going to school and we minimize those skills, how do we re-engage with that in order to be able to see what you're saying? Because uh, uh, when we were learning how to read, we saw the boat, the tree, the house, the dog, and then what happened is the words be represented those the word represented those images and the words became more important than the visual connection that we have with that word. So how do we reconnect with those, that visual library within ourselves? Number one, go back to fantasizing and daydreaming and pretending. Stimulate that part of the mind, that part of the memory. That's extremely important. And then as we do that, what happens is when we start to talk to our animal, we give the vision automatically without trying to fantasize it or see it in our head. For instance, there are words that connect into a visual automatically, it still does. The word water, instantly, you know, you see water in your head. If I said, I'm handing you a cup and I put ice in it, you would see that in a second. It's so communication and thought is so fast. But when we try to communicate with our animal companions, we slow that down or we give them the wrong information. I know we've been talking to them because most of my clients have a problem and their animals been doing the same behavior over and over and over. And why have they been doing the same behavior over and over and over? They've been doing it because we see what the behavior, the bad behavior is. For instance, 
let's say your dog is left home all day and it gets lonely, so it starts chewing up the pillow. And in, by the time you come home, you notice, gosh darn it, that pillow's chewed up again. And you punish the dog, you put him outside, you even show the pillow to the dog, you're very, very angry about it. The next day you come, the pillow's chewed up again. You do the same thing. What's interesting with us, we see the pillow and the dog chewing up that pillow, and we get angry with that animal. We think that our anger is telling that dog to stop its behavior. To the dog, nope, there is no connection between your anger and me chewing up the pillow because in your mind, you gave me permission to chew up the pillow. They separate the emotion and the pillow. If you put those two things together, they would understand it, but you don't. You're driving home and you're thinking, oh God, I hope when I open that door up, the pillow isn't chewed to pieces. And then you walk in and the dog's already down, squatted, ready because they know you're pissed. They don't know why you're pissed. They just know your personality's pissed. So, so how do we correct that? Couple of things. Number one is if you want them to understand, and this is when I'm working with an animal so that they know why their owner is angry with them. I put the two together. I see them chewing the pillow. And at the same time, the same connection, their emotional anger, or whatever physical thing they've done to that animal as a unit. And then I give them a vision of what they could do. We don't give our animals alternative behavior. We just want them to stop. So the and freeze a bunch of them. And when I was gone, they would get that dog bone with uh, the stuffed meatloaf in it. And it would take them a while to chew it. And then I gave dog uh, a job. I would see my animals patrolling the baseboard, going outside, moving around the fence, watching the fence, so that they would ha uh, have something to do. Now, we don't think that we can send a message when you're at work. But if a friend is going to call you, and let's say they call, they're thinking about, oh, yes, I've got to call Ashley or uh, Vicki or uh, Cannon. And it's about 15 minutes. Uh, and they still, oh, my gosh, I haven't called Cannon or Vicki or Ashley. And then they go to make the telephone call in your home. And all of a sudden, before she makes the telephone call, you start thinking of that person that's going to call you. And the second they call you, you say to yourself, oh, what a coincidence. I've been thinking about you for the last 15 minutes. It is that easy. So when you're at work, if you give your dog a vision of getting up and patrolling the baseboards to keep the bugs out, or going outside and patrolling the fence to keep the cats from coming in your yard, that gives them something to do. The alternative to a behavior is so important. Now, let's get into the communication tools in a little slightly different way. Once you give the, this, the, the desire of, okay, I don't want my dog to, pee, to uh, chew up the pillow. And you have that back thought because you've lived with that behavior for a long time. So the minute you start with a new thought, this, I'm going to give you this bone instead, and I want you to patrol the yard or the house, those thoughts are going to compete with what I call the back thought. That back thought is the behavior you've lived with. And that is in complete contrast to what you really want. And so it's really tricky. 
it's very tricky on how do I give that animal clarity of what I want and not have my fear come forward and cancel out what I want that dog to do. This is where pretending comes in. Of all of the communication tools we have for talking with the animal kingdom, pretending I think is the most powerful. And the reason I found out that if you're pretending something, you can pretend it five years ahead of time, pretend that you're telling a, the next door neighbor that has the same problem, and that, that they can uh, give their animal a, uh, a bone and change the direction, then it, what it does is it cancels out that back thought. It's so incredible that it can just automatically wipe it out. Otherwise, you're fighting with it. So if you pretend your dog is already doing it, you relax if you're pretending that it's five years later. If it's five years later and you're telling the neighbor, there's a complete relaxedness in your thought. That back thought doesn't come forward and the dog does the behavior you want. So you're gonna start fantasizing information, daydreaming information, utilizing your creative uh, communication skills in order to find new ways to help that animal. And then you're gonna add pretending because pretending is such a powerful, powerful tool for communication with another species. I, um, when I started to uh, work with animals and I was trying to find a combination, how can I help people and animals understand that when I give them a, a vision that an animal is in the moment, their thought process in the moment. So let's say you successfully give the communication and you come home and the pillow isn't chewed up and you're just delighted. That is so powerful to recall and remember that because then you're not fantasizing it. And you have to tell them every single day. Because they're in the moment, we think we learn that you don't have to tell them again, that they're good, they already have it, no. So every single day you have to walk in and you notice the pillows are in the same place you left them and the dog has not touched them. He's chewed up your bone, the bone that's sitting on a, a towel that you've left for them. They've done their patrolling. And you walk in and you just feel the joy. Oh my God, my house is normal. And you feel happy. You add that emotion and then you tell that dog, I love it that you chew up your bone and patrol the baseboard. I just love coming home and seeing all this stuff that you take care of. No thought of the pillow. And you have to do it every day. Praise them every single day because they are in the moment. And then that visual of coming in and seeing the pillows in the same place, of seeing them doing their job, becomes repetition to them and they'll do it more and more and more. Very, very powerful. So now you know where the communication problems are and that you've been communicating with your animals because of the fear and living with a, a problem. You have to come up with cr very creative ways that fits the needs of the animal and fits the needs of yourself. And that's why I say, stimulate that creative visual thing that we used to do as children when we escaped into this kinder world and fantasized about creating something that wasn't, uh, didn't seem real, wasn't a, around. Those things, the, that, that stimulates the mind and, and it uh, activates the visual library within our our uh, mind and memory within our memory that isn't brought forward 
So I want that to be brought forward so that when you say to your dog or your cat, I love it when you run and use the cat box, that you see it at the same time you say it. So it isn't something that you're trying your best to do. So I'm going to open it up to some questions on this because uh, I can feel that some people have it really, really crystal clear and that some of you have a little bit of confusion. So can we open it up to some questions? Yes. Samantha, do you want me to... Um... Yeah, hey, folks, there's 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 quite a few in the meeting, but I have been getting some questions on the sidebar. Um, okay. They're they're more specific um, to issues people are having. Do you want me yeah. to read them out, or I can? Yes, we can do that. Um, the most recent one from 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 Griff. Um, he said, um, for almost a year, I have two birds that are hitting continually my skylight and also a mirror I have outside. I have covered it with cardboard to try to train them to leave, but they are tires, tirelessly hitting cardboard till the mirror is revealed again. It is maddening their determination. What are they trying to communicate to me? So uh, uh, are these outside birds? Are these outside birds or is that what he's talking about? An outside bird that's hitting the window or any? Yes, outside. Outside birds, interesting. Well, first off, I would connect in with the animal, with the bird itself, um, to find out from them why they're doing it. That's a different skill than giving animals communication. This class is basically showing where the gap is in our ability to communicate with another species. We have too many animals that are being dropped off at the pound or being abused in some way. Uh, for uh, it, We want them to stop a behavior, but we don't know how to stop that behavior. We don't know how to tell them because what we've been doing has been ineffective. So uh, this class is specifically to have you get engaged with the tools that actually communicate with another species, what the human species wants them to do or not do. So uh, with a bird that's flying into uh, a mirror or a window, I think my sense is that they feel it's a, just another way of moving, an easier way of going around that big building is what I think. But I would sit quietly and ask that question, sit outside and ask that bird that question, and then uh, go neutral because you really want to know the answer. Mm -hmm. Then go neutral and wait and you will get some kind of uh, sensation in the body don't veto that sensation or that thought. That's what I would do. And regarding the beauty of it, I would put something in front of it that uh, fulfills the need that you want of having a mirror outside and something that helps so the birds don't hit it. Be creative. Come up with something new. <laughs> All right, what's another question? I'd like the questions relate to this a particular subject matter on how to send clear information to your animal companion. Deb um, had a question. I just unmuted you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, just quickly going back to Griff, I had a similar situation with some birds and I was told by the wild bird shop that it's, um, they see the reflection and they're trying to get, they think it's another bird. It's usually around mating time and nesting time. So it might be that they see their reflection and think it's another bird. And what I did, I put newspaper over my window and that helped. Oh. Uh, but, that, so yeah. that was an answer to that one. Um, I have two questions, if I, if I yeah. may. Yeah. I've got two, two dogs and two cats. Um, one question is connected with the both of them. So uh, my cats are older and they used to go outside a lot and they would do their business outside but we have a litter tray for night time but they've recently started use they can be outside they come inside and do their business in the litter tray which wouldn't be too bad i would get rid of it but my dogs have cottoned on to the fact that every so often when they hear the cats in the litter tray <laughs> 
and they go and eat it, which I find quite that's disgusting. <laughs> so it's a two-pronged problem. Why are the cats suddenly coming in and then they go back outside um, to use the litter what I would <laughs> What I would do um, is start uh, recalling more and more, remembering when they went outside, since you want them to go outside. A lot of times they'll do a behavior that is a little different in order to say to you, I don't feel as good as I used to. Can you check my urinary tract system? I'm not, I'm not feeling really, really well. So I would rule out any kind of physical problem with them first. And then second, remember when they went outside and just add your joy. I love it when you poop and pee outside and see the area that they dig in and, and activate that even more versus them coming in. If a dog is eating their poop, a lot of times that means that they are uh, lacking some kind of mineral or vitamin. And uh, so you just check that and up it. They, they don't see it as waste, they see it as food. Yes. <laughs> so, so I would, uh, since that's, so what you really want is your cats to go outside in the yes. summertime to to do that. So I would start just seeing them doing that, uh, you know, fantasizing it and, and praising it. Say it and see it at the same time. Verbally say, I love it when you go outside and poop and pee. See them doing it though. Don't just say that and not have the vision of them digging and actually the urine and the species coming out because that little gap is really important they'll go outside, but they won't finish the job. So full communication, but keep, keep it simple and add your emotion to it. Any other questions? Yes, we've got a couple. Um, I'm gonna read some. So um, this is from Dawn. She says, recently our family adopted a shepherd mix, nine years old, mm -hmm. whose owner passed away. I have a strong feeling that she was a service dog. She follows me everywhere and experiences anxiety when she can't be with me. I get the feeling she feels lost or like she can't do her job. My question is, how do I keep her calm when she can't be with me? Uh, how do you keep her calm? Give her a job at the house, number one. And there are some Bach flower and uh, essential oils that you can add to help an animal. Uh, visually, I would connect in with her during the day of going outside. Also, I would look into having her go at least twice a week, maybe to a play day with uh, some other people or finding a uh, family on the, in the same neighborhood where they have a dog that's lonely. Uh, and if she's a service dog, then I would look up, how do I train my animal to be a service dog, but in-house. And the reason I say this is I have a, a niece who lives in Florida, has a back problem and has had to cancer, and she has a service dog. And there are several things that she cannot do in the house. The dog has been trained to take the uh, clothes out of the washer and dryer. Now she has no problem getting the clothes out of the dryer and putting them on the couch and holding a corner if uh, Lori needs to fold up stuff. What they're working on is taking the wet clothes out of the washer and putting them into the dryer. And there she picks up stuff off of the floor. There is a whole area that's waiting to be explored with having animals in-house being trained that's what I would look into. Okay. Um, are you okay to keep going, Samantha? I've got another one that's yeah. um, a little bit more specific to the what you were discussing. We have a, uh, this is from Sandy. She says, we have a sweet rescue Maltese dog. Her personality changes when we walk her and she barks when people are in her sight. Do I visualize her just walking without being bothered by their presence? You have to help them feel safe. And I'm gonna go in depth on the class on the first. June 1st is about barking dogs and it, not only inside, but outside. One of the things that I would do is 
if an animal is barking excessively and pulling the leash towards that animal, you're not quite sure if it's being an aggressive movement or if it's, uh, uh, I'm anxious to play with you. Who are you? I want to touch you. I want to smell you. you you're uh, my kind. So we have to make a discernment between if it's slightly aggressive or if it's more to excitement. Once we know that, then we can gear how we deal with it. One of the things I would do is visually see the animal stand firm beside you and then watch the dog go by. That way it gives the dog a feeling that there is no um, aggression from the other animal's point of view. You're just watching it go by. That's all that's gonna happen. It may have had a traumatic experience because I work with a lot of animals that have had traumatic experiences with other dogs that have been on leashes or at the park and then all of a sudden they become aggressive towards you. So being able to give the animal clarity I move over on the, this side of me and stand firm and watch that. And I can actually turn my head and see people and their dogs walking by me. I want you to get to that place. Do it before you take a walk. Show the dog in your mind what you want them to do before you take the walk. So at night, the night before, when your mind is quiet and their mind is quiet, then go through the scenario, hooking the leash on, going for a walk, seeing other dogs, standing firm, watching the dog walk by, coming home, walking into the house, and nothing has happened. That gives them the whole clarity and it starts to help you uh, relax that this dog isn't going to do that. Again, if you've seen the behavior where it scares you, then use that word uh, pretending that it's about five years later and the dog actually is doing the behavior you want. It relaxes your thoughts so that the visions can get clearly and quickly to that animal, number one. Number two, it gives you a relaxed thought so that back thought doesn't come in and terrorize you. <laughs> <laughs> okay because <laughs> we we do we have that back thought oh my god i hope he doesn't i hope that, that they don't do that oh my gosh <laughs> it gets out of hand <laughs> all right any other questions there's there's actually quite a few and i had a really um sweet one i was just looking at um and i can't find my place but it was from don who asked um how old samantha you were when you started developing your gifts um, she's uh, 12 and oh. feels like she might have the ability to communicate with animals and wants to know how she can work on developing that further. All right. Okay. The reason I can talk to animals is when I was young, I couldn't read or spell or remember information. So I excelled in drawing, painting, uh, being creative, totally right brain. And it was difficult to do the others. So I went to the animals for my emotional nurturing and they, my dog Ginger, I would cry into her chest and, and I was so closely connected to her. I did not know that she was sending me visual communication. She would send me a picture and I would do the right thing. I never questioned why I did the right thing. We all do this. We're watching television and then the animal wants water. And so you get up and go fill the water dish and then you come back and watch television, not knowing the dog just gave you a vision. So the more that you um, think in terms of the visual communication, the more that they're going to pick it up. For instance, I had a profound experience with a pheasant that made it crystal clear that I communicated with, I had a communication with a, uh, another species. When we have communication with our normal animals, it's normal things. The doors, oh, they want to go out, they want water, they want food, whatever it is. But when you have an experience with another species that flies and you know what that feels like, then you, it gets your attention. So it got my attention. And I was pretty young. 
So what happened is I started to ponder, Sam, everything you do is visual. You don't look at street signs, but you notice that house, that rock, that tree, and you navigate the world from that point of view. So the more that I started to recognize I'm visual, is it possible for us to have a visual conversation? So I started uh, thinking, well, how, how can I do this? So I sat down one day, it was lunchtime, and my iris setter was outside, and I thought, I'm going to give him a picture of getting the tennis ball and bringing it in and putting it in my lap. So sure enough, I close my eyes, and then I hear the the pet door opening, and we had new carpet, and I'd hear him go crunch, 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 crunch on that new carpet, and then all of a sudden, he's right in front of me, and pop, that yellow ball ended up in my lap. And I thought, oh my God, he just picked up this clarity. So the next thing I did is I was raising four children at this time, so I would drop laundry forever, a sock, underwear, a t-shirt, whatever. I'd send Star to go pick up that uh, piece of laundry. And then Star would bring it to the garage where the washer was. I put it in. I'm thinking, this is really, really cool. I don't have to climb those stairs and pick up that piece of laundry I dropped. So I'm sitting and having lunch. Star walks in. Now this is uh, probably six, eight months later. And I've been having smug how I have him trained. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he walks up to me, sticks his huge nose right in front of my nose and stares deeply into my eyes. And I start to cry. He starts telling me about his life. Now he was born in my home. And I didn't think any longer of when he was a baby puppy. Those aren't thoughts for me. And all of a sudden, I get the feeling of him with his mom. And the visions start welling up. And then I get this wave that said, now you will not come to know who I am. And he was my first animal teacher. It was profound to have a teacher like him. And I cried my guts when I left him or when he left me. So when I say to this young girl, all you need to do to give them clarity is start with fantasizing, seeing them in your mind, doing the behavior that you want them to do. And then see, for instance, if you have a dog, then give, sit down quietly, acknowledge that that being is more than just this furry animal, that it has a soul and that it's connected and it wants to know who you are, wants to do things that you want them to do. So then when that comes in, close your eyes, make that connection just by saying, I know you're intelligent. I know you're more than just a furry animal. And then close your eyes, see them go outside, bring the ball and plop it in your lap. Start with that, start with that and then see what happens. And then I'm gonna be doing classes much later in the year on how to receive information, that deeper connection soul to soul. Um, and so that, the reason I started with this class, we need deeply to understand that it is very easy to communicate with our, with our animal companions that it isn't, I want the mystique taken out of it. I want you to feel that oh, I could give my dog a vision or my cat using the cat box. I can see that. I can see the relationship of them getting along. These tools are our inborn natural skills that are not valued. My goal is not only to build a center for interspecies communication, but more than that, I want the public schools in time that your great grandchildren will be able to go to a public school and learn 
that their ability to fantasize, daydream, pretend, their sensory system, and their intuition are value tools for communicating with other species, and they need to be acknowledged and valued as important as reading, writing, and arithmetic. I spent years wanting to be like everybody else that could read, write. Took me a many, many years to get the skill in order to be able to hold my thought long enough to put on a piece of paper. And I finally finished my book. And now, not only will that book get out, but before I leave the planet, your great grandchildren will benefit from you showing up. And that's why I'm delighted that you said, I'm going to take this class. I'm going to learn. Thank you for being present. Oh. And I'm saying this a little soon because I think they said the class was 45 minutes. I'm not sure if it's a, an hour. If it's an hour, great, we can do some more communication. But if it just goes blank, <laughs> <laughs> I won't feel so bad. <laughs> Right. Because I upgraded the account, Samantha, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Hopefully it'll grandfather itself into this class, I hope. Um, but I, oh, fabulous. <laughs> but I also want to make sure that um, we take a minute um, to let everybody know there's going to be two upcoming classes. Um, there's going to be two specific classes, one on the 1st of June um, uh, on how to control barking issues. And um, the second on the third for um, working with cat box issues. And um, I'm going to do two things. Uh, one is uh, Vicki had put earlier, maybe you could do it again, Vicki, to the group, um, a link to Samantha's website, which is simply Samantha Curry, spelled K-H-U-R-Y dot com. Um, and you can sign up for her email list there and um, you, we can get you, you know, links. I think her email uh, address is on there as well. Um, it's a $20 a class and you just simply uh, pay through PayPal and then um, Samantha can send you a link. But I think this is a great way to stay connected. And, and if anybody has questions, um, Again, you can send them to me um, during this time. I'm, I'm listed as Samantha because I'm logged into her account so I could drive the admission <laughs> process because it's, it's actually quite tricky. Uh, if any of you guys are Zoom experts, feel free to email Samantha and let her know and you can maybe help me or, or Vicki the next time around. But I think that we did pretty okay, all things considered. Um, I need help in that area of being 77. Also, my PayPal is my email address, sjcurry at yahoo.com, very easily. So you can, uh, you know, sign. And because I'm going to be having a book come out, I'm hoping within the next uh, three months, six months, um, if you want to get on that list, then email me not only for the classes, so I know that you're registered for the class, but also uh, if you're interested in getting the book. So, yeah. yeah. And then um, Ju Julie just said, and this is a good point, Samantha, we should send everybody a reminder um, the day before the class, probably. Oh, yeah. She said she almost missed this one. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> Um, yeah. And lots of folks are saying thank you. I'm gonna. I, would you like me to just unmute everybody for a minute, if in case anybody wants to chime? in um everybody's yeah. everybody's off mute that wants to if anybody wants to thank stay you anything. so much thank you so much it was wonderful <laughs> thank you yeah, thank you thank That's you so much thank you thank you thanks guys for showing up <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you so much. Is, is it possible to stay on for a few more minutes and ask more questions? Is that Samantha, I leave that to you. you. I remember you had a question. Go ahead. Um, that would be great. So um, my partner Harry and I adopted two cats last summer. Um, I think they had a tough childhood because they were abused and ended up at ASPCA. They had a foster mom for four months. One cat had an injury that a broken leg that wasn't given any vet training. Anyway, so I think they're just a little 
you know, stress. So we got them when they were five. And one of the cats um, comes and jumps on the bed between 4.30 and 5.30 every morning. Oh. And she insists on being fed, even though I have a bowl of dry food out. She wants me to walk downstairs. It's kind of a ritual for her. Give her some <laughs> wet cat food and then pet her and then open the door and let her outside, so even though she's got a doggy door. Like, she just wants a lot of attention. And I can't figure out what image to send her, you know, because at first I was thinking, oh, is it like she can do this at 7 a.m. and, you know, a clock with a seven on it? I'm like, she's not going to know how to tell time. You know, is yeah. it like, you know, I can't figure out what the image is that I'm supposed okay. to be sending her. All righty. Um, a couple of things. Number one, during the day, she's sleeping too much, number one. So you want to disturb that. You want to really go wake her up. And then uh, give her the image of at that hour in the morning, she can patrol the baseboards. And I would give her visions of patrolling the baseboards. And then seeing the light, how bright of a light it is when you want to get up and giving him that vision of that brightness, then get on the bed and wake me up. And then start telling her, I love it when you wake me up and see how bright it is, uh, and that will help her. Uh, the other thing is she may have some emotional things that get activated at that time because there's an emptiness that happens. So emotionally, before you go to bed, start working with the emotional aspect of her nature. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that. I want you to pretend that she's a baby kitten. And I want you to place that baby kitten right over your heart with your hand on that, on your heart. And then I want you to just impart safety and how much you love her and then go to sleep. That will start healing the internal aspect that's Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay. It's time. I can see the clock. Okay. And I just had put my email address in the messenger uh, message uh, section. It's ashrichardson at mac.com if anybody wanted a recording of the session. Um, or you can let Samantha know and she can let me know and I can send it out to you after this is over if you missed part of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Samantha. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mary Jane. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get to see who you are. <laughs> get I to know. The visual. You know, thank you very I much. The email that I got from you, the email that I got from you this morning or yesterday, Samantha, had the wrong Zoom link. And so I texted Dora. Oh. She gave me the new one. And I just sent a message and I would love to have the recording of it, but I didn't catch her email address. It's A S H Ash. Richardson, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N at M-A-C dot com. Um, or if you said it to Samantha that you want the video, um, she can forward it to me and I'll send it on to you afterwards. Okay, great. I'm looking very forward to our session tomorrow. I can't wait. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> Get to work two in, with can two we, of your dogs. Can we Are do it on Zoom? Uh, no, Zoom? no, because I'm not, you know, I'm not that okay. uh, familiar Please. with it, but in time, I will do more of this uh, in time, right? At this point, in, there's too much going on. <laughs> oh. My brain. Remember, I'm doing really, really good talking to dogs and cats. <laughs> the rest of this is a stretch for me, and I'm willing to stretch. The universe know, knows that I'm willing to stretch. All right. And, uh, so, okay. Thank uh, you. It's so fabulous seeing everybody. You know, I I have to tell you, I thought it was going to be colder, and um, it's not. I really, <laughs> I really feel like I'm with you. <laughs> I've heard that kind of comment when they do the advertisement on television or the news, uh, doing it together, and I thought no because this is a metal thing and you're far away, but that's not true. 
That's totally not true. Canon even mentioned to me the first time of that they were going to do a vir vir virtual dinner with, or that they did a virtual dinner. And I thought to myself, what in the world is a virtual dinner? <laughs> and, and she said it made it feel like everybody was actually there at their table. And they had wine and the dinner and toasted. And I thought, oh, how fabulous. This is kind of like that. <laughs> I, I can see how this could fulfill that need to be connected. That need to be connected. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ashley, right, guys, I, I hate to say goodbye to you, but I'm going to have to. <sighs> Next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ashley. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, the gallery view is not bringing in everybody. Is that because there's too many for the screen? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. The little arrow on the side, you can scroll over and see the rest. Uh, of I said, we tried that uh, and I did see more people. So I was wondering if yep. that was. Yeah. Nice. We just, we overloaded it. There were so many people. Yeah, so many. Yeah. All right, I'm going to sign off, which is going to end it for everybody. But thank you, everyone. And again, you. Um, Bye, guys. we'll see you on the next Bye. one. Bye. Bye. Bye, Samantha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.